Good morning. Welcome. This is Sunrise Daily. I'm Ayo Makine. It's a brand new week. Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise Daily on Channels Television. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. A very good morning to you all. Welcome to Sunrise Daily. I am Chamberlain Oso. Well, we have to pick up on this particular matter. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, they, or well, lately, there's been a lot of activities going on there, such that, um, you know, if one may not have been paying attention previously, I think it's about time that changes because uh, the kind of arrest we see lately from the agency is indeed mind-boggling. And one might just add that, look, they need a lot of encouragement from everyone because if you look through uh, a couple of days ago, 193 billion naira worth of drugs seized in Lagos. And you, uh, who would have thought that that amount of seizure or that amount of drugs or would even be in a place as this, let alone in the country? It just shows that, look, there's, there's been so much that's been going on under the radar before now because for them to develop that kind of effrontery to get to this level, it only tells you that, um, wow, it, it, it's really huge because, I mean, time and again, we get to hear and see that uh, if you go back and check it, you will see that um, a lot of, if not 90%, if not 90%, it, that's to say the least, of some of these crimes, most of the crimes committed, they would always tell you, are drug related. Even on the roads, on the roads alone, you see lots of persons under the influence. Commercial motorcycles, go ahead and check them. Get to the parks, get to several places. It's a lot. And unfortunately, one might also add that even in schools lately, there are different strategies being adopted. So. It's such that, I mean, we all remember the latest one that is going on with a former, uh, he used to be in the police. I think that case is still pretty much on. And so many keeping tabs to see how that will eventually end because there are several persons in high quarters, high places that you never, you expected a lot more from. But it turns out that um, they're involved in certain things. So. This one, I mean, even recently, the 75-year-old man who's also equally involved in this matter, man, look, we just need to do a lot more because um, much as this is one aspect of the entire scenario, there's another component of that which um, the several persons to, I mean, we must equally commend several agencies, non-governmental groups, well-meaning foundations who are doing their lot to rehabilitate a lot of people, religious bodies, several of them are doing their bit to ensure that um, they are absorbed back into society because sometimes people, yeah, it could just be just a little slip and before you know what's going on, it, it, it's way gone. So it is a lot. Uh, we need a lot more attention to be paid on those rehabilitation centers, which are so crowded. We need to pay a lot more attention to that. Society needs to... Uh, see how we could equally stretch out a helping hand, listening. There's so many people who are down with several scenarios, but they can't come through because of stigmatization of different members of society. But we need to also see while this is going on, we equally play a role to ensure we reach society of this. Because when they say we used to be a transit point, but now look at what's going on. You just wonder, are they trying to make this place a haven? Drug users? Goodness. Well, the question you want to ask, uh, first of all, Chamberlain, is why was it necessary for us to have the NDLEA in the first place? And um, those who know would re remember the, the precariousness of the situation in the 90s, especially 19, in the, even before the 90s. In 1990, the NDLEA came on stream to combat those issues. And those who were around at the time would know how bad the situation was. It was horrendous, such that as soon as the NDLA, you know, started work, of course it was under you know, on military rule, the clampdown was huge. The fact that we're still talking about this now is, is befuddling, Chamberlain. I mean, you, you, you got that quite right. What's even more befuddling is, you, is the caliber of people you would even find engaged in it. Um, you spoke about a 75-year-old man, you know, uh, 
also talk about the 63-year-old man as well, uh, also in this city, uh, in this country, beg your pardon, who has also been involved. He ships, you know, illicit drugs to his own daughter somewhere in the UAE, and one is wondering exactly where this is all going. Then you've also spoken to the, the, the volume of drugs that are found in different places, you know, by the NDLA, their officers, and all of those things. Um, I think this speaks to me about the need for us all to recognize this as part of the things that we need to deal with. Don't forget that as soon as um, General Pubamarwa became the head of this organization, one of the first things he said was, look, hard drugs are complicating the security implication we have on our hands. So once anyone has taken this thing, forget it. I mean, there is no, no, no space for reasoning anymore. Forgive me for saying, and I do not wish to be a bearer of doom, but the elections is also ahead of us. People will do just about anything to get into office, to get into anything, to do anything that they need to do. Anyone takes these things, they don't care whose ox is gone. They don't care what is done. So if we want a better nation for ourselves, see something, say something, invite the NDLEA to do the needful. The young ones are also hugely at risk here. We know this. We've seen, and it's, we're only talking about the hard drugs that, you know, are being shipped and all of that. Hey, how about those ones that don't even look like it? the most, the craziest of things are done in the name of just wanting to satisfy a drug craving? God help us, but we also need to play our part and do the needful when we see it. Indeed, Ayo, um, you know, let me just reiterate the position of the NDLA boss when he took office about the security implications of the seizure. And, um, you know, if we cast our mind back to the big bust of, you know, um, you know the Tramadol syndicate um, in the country, some, just some years back by the international media, then we'll, be, we'll realize the implications of, you know, drug use and drug abuse on our youth. And uh, when we think about insurgency, we think about banditry, we realize that um, there is a strong connection, you know, between um, that kind of criminality in, in the country and drug abuse. You know, those, those youths cannot perpetrate the kind of um, callous crimes that they perpetrate without being under the influence of some kind of uh, drug use or drug abuse. And we see, uh, you know, the long-term implications of that abuse on their psyche, on their um, mental state. That is really, really uh, critical, you know, for us to take a second look at that and call for value orientation and reorientation. Not just call for it, but also be seen to be doing something deliberate about engaging the youth positively. Not just in the northeast of Nigeria and in the northwest of Nigeria, but also coming down south because those crimes are beginning to creep in. You know, so that said about value orientation and reorientation of the youth, let's also look at, um, you know, let, let's commend the NDLA for uh, this work. You know, uh, just the other day, uh, last month to be precise, a physically challenged man was also uh, caught with... Uh, Tramadol tablets. I can't remember, you know, uh, the worth of those tram Tramadol tablets. Now he was bound for. He was Italy bound, you know. So, uh, you know, people unsuspecting people are carrying these things, you know. And if we just uh, look, take a second look at value reorientation, you also know that it's tied to, you know, desperation to get rich, rich quick, the get rich quick uh, syndrome, you know. So. Um, uh, the the, the, the uh, alertness of the NDLE must be commended. And the $278 million seizure, highest in the history of the country, we also must commend the NDLE for being alert. And uh, we, we just hope that this momentum will be sustained. Chamberlain. Well, very well said, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at what the dailies have got for us today in a moment.
Let's take you through some of the dailies we've got here. We'll start with New Telegraph today. APC controversy trails campaign cancel as NWC disowns list. Plans review of PCC membership. Tunubu political associate sidelining party ascribed to chieftain. So, well, it is the week where the campaigns are scheduled to start and then you've got this. So, but yeah. There's a big one right here. And then you equally see uh, some scenario at the bottom strip. 2023, PDP walks tight rope over internal wrangling. Atiku may have foreclosed peace with Wike. So that you equally see right there. And then, um, yeah, there's several others. Um, but I'm just trying to see. Study links, smartphones, blue light to... Yes, premature aging. Oh, boy. As though that's not enough. Well, look at this. It's above the lead story as well. Uh, bleaching cosmetics. Spa owners risk prosecution over unauthorized chemicals. Yeah. So, um, just so you know, uh, there's several things you need to look at the active ingredients before you embark or accept certain things being administered so that is new telegraph today the nigerian tribune is next and uh, the lead of the paper this morning is also talking about the elections and that's it right there 2023 polls states to watch as campaigns kick off this week <coughs> can we say the permutations have started well, that's uh, the lead of the paper. The story you'll find on page two of the paper this morning. And uh, a number of so many other issues, of course. The story we raised earlier is also right there. NDLA arrests 75-year-old man, 21 others, over drugs seized in seven states. Intercepts 1,000,387 bottles of opioids. Akuskura. Here and for the first time. Well, that's what you have on the front page of the paper this morning, and several other stories go with it. The back page has sports. My debut season for PSG was bad. That's subscribe to Messi. Must have been a messy start then. That's the Nigerian Tribune today. And from the Nigerian Tribune this morning, let's turn our attention to the Nigerian News Director. And he has a potpourri of stories but we have time enough for just the very, very important ones. And let's start with a big story, which um, uh, focuses on the electricity sector. And the top uh, headline starts with this, 93 billion naira debt. Mass connection looms for electricity consumers as discos vow to go tough. Expert fault, experts rather, fault discos, that's the first of the riders. And then NERC for Nigeria's power sector challenges. I'll take that again. Expert for discos, NERC for Nigeria's power sector challenges. So that's, uh, that's it for the big story. It looks like uh, there are more troubles for Nigerian electricity consumers. Not everyone has uh, you know, the financial wherewithal to um, you know, go solar. That's uh, what some people are patronizing now. Let's go above the nameplates to get more stories. The last may not have been heard about the Ocean governorship election. And uh, the one above the nameplate, but to my extreme right, uh, is captioned this way, Osho Guba, we are in court to deepen our democratic values. That's attributed to Oyetola's aid. Recall INEX position about uh, two conflicting uh, Beavers report the other day raised some dust uh, with uh, the Osho State government quoting um, Yaga Africa's position on that as well. So that's emerging. We'll get to know uh, how it turns out, perhaps in a matter of days. And lastly, uh, the one to the extreme left above the nameplate as well has to do with politics. 2023 presidency, what would determine our choice candidate? NEF. That's the Nigerian News Direct this morning. Take the Gafanga newspaper next. PFN XSGF Lowell disowns bishops that met Tinubu. Tinubu desperate procuring fake Christian groups. Babachi Lowell. 
PFN or CAN, CAN's dictate to APC, ascribed to Kayamo. Buhari Buhari directed exclusion of Shimbajo Mustafa from campaign council. Kwara South stakeholders protest exclusion from campaign council. And then you see APC irresponsible, doesn't deserve re-election, ascribed to LP. So all of that for you on the front page here. Uh, equally on politics at the bottom straight, PDP crisis. Atiku reaches out, moves to break Wiki's ranks. Yeah, you see that. And then it's not any better for uh, the academics. Uh, look at this. ASU, resorting to litigation will prolong strike. This is ascribed to parents and nans. So they expect both parties, federal government and ASU, to do a lot better than they are today. So uh, whatever became of the meeting, we thought that uh, some members of the National Assembly were supposed to meet some persons in different groups. So we wonder what's going on with that one. And then you get to see insecurity. Nigeria passing through hard times. That's ascribed to UN. So you might as well want to see that one. Well, don't forget to take a look at what is on the back page here today. Amunike drags Yana Cho to Zambia, Zanako FC. Uh, well, it's a different Yana Cho right there, which you can see on the front page. Well, that is Manga today. This Nigeria is next. And look at what it has on its front page. 2023 election. Jonathan sends strong message to Nigerians. Cautions against voting for killers. Find out the meaning of that on page two of the paper this morning. A second writer says, Be united to defeat enemies of nation. That's ascribed to Adeboye. Find the details on the inside pages. And right under the picture on the front page, NEF kicks, as Kiamu says, forum not fit to determine winner of presidential election. Also, that is on page two of the paper this morning. And um, above, well, right beside the nameplate, Abachalut set up Sul Buhari Malami over agreement. Story is on page four. Um, I'm just wondering, is it uh, suing because it's the right thing to do or it's not the wrong thing to do or the money shouldn't be returned to Nigeria or the money should come to, I don't know. Well, the well, story... Serap is in the business of suing. Oh, no. So perhaps... Uh, Serap is in the business of... So I've gotten used accountability. to that by, yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. accountability and suing, uh, well, sometimes they may just be related. Okay, well, <laughs> I, have not, I have not looked at that part. But well, this is one thing that demands accountability and moment uh, parents, I don't know how they deal with this one. Prices of food items still rising as ascribed to the NBS. If we can, we're saying that in October, what are we going to say in December? Well, the details you'll find on page 21 of This Nigeria Today. All right, from This Nigeria newspapers, let's look at uh, the Guardian newspaper. And it leads with this one, very unsettling, about the aviation sector. There's been a lot of worry from that sector in recent times. And the big story goes thus, more airlines depart empty as charges, rejections, stifle export. Let's take a look at the riders. Air freight import to export ratio slumps to 87 to 13. That's ra rather, uh, you know, that's a huge margin. And then the next one, stakeholders condemn overseas ban of local yam, beans, smoked fishes, ginger, others. Regulators squeak under staff shortage, multiple guidelines, poor compliance with standards. And single guideline better cooperation imperative say fan nepsa well compliance is one thing and the ban on those goods is another well, that's it for the big story uh, let's also go above just beneath the nameplate above the headline the big story to see this one it's on politics pfn disowns northern bishops meeting with tunubu as more disquiet trail apc campaign Council. That story is of page 8 read, just in case you're wondering uh, why and how the bishop story 
is resurfacing, you know, uh, just from after the APC primaries, the story about those bishops. you find that on page 8. And lastly, uh, let's look at uh, this one uh, beneath the, the, just beside the, the big picture on the front page of um, the Guardian newspapers, Huriwa flays Sonwolu over suffocating taxation. Uh, it's a page five read if you're wondering what the tax is about. That's the Guardian newspapers this morning. I'll take a look at Abuja Inquirer this morning. They've got a different headline altogether. And the late story on the front page of Abuja Inquirer right there. 29 billion naira ground rents. FCTA to prevent debtors from disposing of properties. Consent letter now required. So that, some sort of battle going on there. So... Uh, Let's see how that goes. But that is the big one on the front page right here. Uh, then inside life of Abuja, big boy alleged kidnapper. That also features right there. But there you go. Uh, that is Abuja Inquirer this morning. Daily Trust newspaper has this on its front page. It sounds like another warning or something we need to give attention to. Nigeria must have national identity. Nigeria must have national dream, identity. That's ascribed to Obasanjo, and I think we've talked about that too many times uh, on, on this program. We need to have an identity in order to know what to chase after. It says country needs unifier to address current disunity. Next rider, Nigeria's future will be great, ascribed to the vice president. Leadership quality declining, recruitment process faulty, ascribed to Abakoba and Jega. Don't get carried away by propaganda. That's ascribed to Okonje Well. I find the details of that story on page four of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. A number of other stories that are right on the front page are there for your picking. And uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspapers. Leadership on Monday also leads with politics this morning. And uh, the big story uh, is rendered thus. Two days to go, political parties reject state charges for campaign signage billboards. That's a page four read. Let's take a look at the riders. Say it will make costs of campaign unbearable for candidates. Presidential governorship candidates pay between 5 million and 15 million naira per billboard. Others pay varying amounts. Smaller parties decry high charges of signage by states. That's interesting, Ayo. And uh, this is the season for, uh, you know, um, signage agencies and billboard agencies, and of course the printing, uh, uh, like other the printing press now, the printing industry. Uh, this is this is the big time for them. But then again, there's also. Uh, this case for most of the political party materials, the signages, the billboards to be done in Nigeria, as some of them are done outside Nigeria. Well, it's actually a very well positioned timing. Elections begin, you know, in a few days' time, right? So it's a good time to build up to the end of the year when people really do spend a lot of money. And it's a good time to make a case for the local industry. Well, yes. A good time to make a case for the local industry but then look at what we found on the front page that food prices are rising so. <laughs> so we can also make a case for food prices as well that's a good one all right let's take a look at some more stories um, from front page of leadership as we go above the nameplate flood kills seven displaces 2800 persons in choir state uh, that's a page 10 read uh, from front page of uh, leadership newspapers. And lastly, a former president, good luck, Jonathan, is speaking, also above the nameplate, and that story is captioned this way, 2023, don't vote killers. They hacked me out <laughs> in 2015. Well, I don't know about that, but you find that story on page six of leadership newspapers, just in case you want to get the details. It's the former president speaking. Chamberlain. 
We'll take a look at Daily Times next here. Yeah. Also about 2023, PFN, Kayamo clash over Bishop's visit to Tinubu. And the writer here says, Northern bishops who met with Tinubu are on their own, says PFN. And then you see, pastors are to lead people to salvation, not preach politics, Kayamo. Well, um... <laughs> In the same way somebody may tell you, huh? lawyers are to argue matters in court. <laughs> and maybe, what, not preach politics too? I mean, you get to see, I read all sorts of things. It's that time of the season, of the year in this country. So just brace yourself, you'll hear all sorts, I tell you. So I know you feel sorry for us that you get to hear this kind of things every now and then. But sometimes, you know, you can look at the comical side of these things. You can help keep your, your, your blood pressure down, if you will. But look at us at the bottom strip here. Uh, Buari Roo's corrosive effect of corruption in Africa. So I know, right, different thoughts going through your minds i might add and then they wow don't forget this i mean yeah it, it's political season but is it a buzz really about october 1st has anybody forgotten that how many days is it to october 1st but anyway there's something here about that 62nd independence anniversary a brighter future awaits nigeria ascribe to Oshiba Joe. and then transmission company of nigeria it's not up for sale, BPE. Uh, many questions are about transmission, really, in this country. What should we do? Isn't it about time that some things happen? I mean, you will get to hear time and again how uh, different states complain as to the impediments the TCN seems to be posing, either inadvertently or directly, to them getting power supply. The challenge of national grid itself as well. Well, much as with yeah, all that talk about Senate passing the bill, uh, what about National Assembly, what about signing the bill, is it law as of yet? So, I mean, somebody needs to uh, let me know if uh, we're missing something, we'll just double check on that, but that we know we have challenges and uh, we'll get to hear a lot more as we did say as we move forward to that time well there you go that ends that is it with daily times this morning it ends a look at some of the front pages here this morning well, don't forget you can equally get your voices heard just send us a comment or two about whatever you might have heard or you like to get off your chest we're here for you that ends a look at some of the dailies here today we will be back in a moment stay with us Thank you for staying with us. Well, the 2023 elections is definitely right before us. And of course, the electorate is going to be listening to all kinds of things, all shades of opinion. That has started already, but it's going to really, really kick off in earnest later on in the course of this week. So what should the electorate be interested in? What should the electorate be concerned about? What is the electorate supposed to hear that will make the difference? How does the statement by Peter Drucker, that finance management specialist, his statement that the most important thing in communication is hearing what is not being said? Let's explore that and a number of other issues this morning with Emeka Okonkwo, who is a policy analyst and as well as a certified estate surveyor and valuer. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Um, for you, what's the biggest issue as far as the elections of 2023 is concerned? <laughs> okay, I mean, I think um, the elections are of importance to everybody, given where we are today. But I will try to approach the issue from the perspective of a professional. 
actually relating to what I do as a valuer. In the recent times, there have been so many collapses of buildings, right? And it's very significant that we utilize this time and this moment in time to reflect on what development really is. I mean, if we use the collapsed buildings as a very reflective point to what the economy reflects to us and what development reflects to us and what failed leadership reflects to us, we can be able to corroborate it because development is a progression. It starts from the thoughts. Uh, keep in mind that the concept of civilized living, as we know it today, became possible because man rose to the need for security. That's why one of the basic requirements of governance is security of lives and property, right? And you cannot develop except you coalesce. You come together to agree that you need your best to lead you. The choices we make are very, very uh, the, I mean, the consequences are real. For instance, if you're looking at uh, utilizing, like I said, these failed structures that we see everywhere, children don't develop houses. Development emanates from the concept of the fact that you're already matured. So you can make your choices. And if you can make your choices, I think it was uh, a, a German historian, T.S. Eliot, that asked a very poignant question. He said, where is the wisdom that we've lost in knowledge? And where is the knowledge that we've lost in information? Everybody knows in real terms what the right things to do and what the wrong things are. Consequentially, what is happening to us today is just failure of options, the choices that we make. And the funny thing is that a lot of people know what is right but to when, choose, what is right to do. When you say failure of options, is it that we don't have the options or we don't have enough information to guide us to make those salient decisions? Exactly the point. That's what this historian was talking about. In his book, I mean, this classical book written by T.S. Eliot, he was talking about the conflicting nature of man, why he will come to a reality where he understands what the right thing to do and he chooses the wrong things to do. This, I think that is at the... That is at the base of what we are evolving from, right? Development requires that we scale back and allow the best of us to go forward. In the Grecian um, history of evolutions and organizations of governance, what they found was that they couldn't develop until they were able to fence security around themselves, okay? That was the, the most pregnant argument that led them to agree to, sub, to submit their rights to another person to lead. When they came to that point, the only reason why they did it was because they selected the best to lead, the best to protect them. If, when you come around, if you are under attack and all that, that is not the time to start looking on sentiments. You're looking at who is the best to lead you forward, right? Now, development cannot occur except we're secured. I mean, if you look at Maslow's law, Abraham Maslow, the basic laws of human nature, right? Sustenance and physiological needs. Then the second is security of life and property. The moment it was able to be organized, you found out that development can go forward. The consequence of development is making the right choices to allow the people that are better than you in a field to lead. I'm a valuer. I'm not going to treat my son tomorrow if he's sick. I'll take him to a doctor. I'm not going to say that I'm grown. Oh, what am I going to do? No, no. It's realizing the fact that, in fact, the ability to make the right choices is a significant portion of a developed, a developed mind. Leading to the question, what are the things to look out for when making the choices? There are many people who have said over and over again that the decision we have to make next year, February, is as crucial as the oxygen that we breathe itself. So what are those things that Nigerians should be looking out for in the rhetorics? I mean, you have talked about the fact that, uh, um, that some people needed to, we need to know what the right thing to do is in order to, it's a myriad of issues, most certainly, but there has to be a start. So. As the politicians campaign, dish out things they have done, things they haven't done, uh, what are the things to look out for, in your opinion? You see, 
There are, there are a plethora of issues, and I think that everybody who lives in this country doesn't need to be told that we have, we, ha we have a challenge. And the basic thing is that I can do so much, you can do so much, but the impact of governance is crucial, right? Government exists to solve complex problems. And the fundamental thing about governance, just like I think it was um, Henry Ford that said that no man ever builds a reputation for what he's going to do. It's always based on what you've done, right? Mm. We are where we are today, and Nigerians are very knowledgeable and exposed and reflective people, right? The things that we'll be looking at, beyond the sentiments of where I come from, where I worship, and all of those mundane issues, where we are supposed to be looking at the nation in a developmental state. The same way I still go back to the analogy of a home, a building that you want to build. The, the fundamental thing to understand here is that we are trying to build a country. For you to be able to build a country, you have to be able to look at what is sustainable, what, what would make it enduring, what would make it, you know, meet the challenges of all the people that are going to live in it, if it, if it was a home, if it was a society. How will it function for everybody? Yeah. And to be able to pick out on all these things, it is without doubt that one of the fundamental things you require in a leader is a thinking mind. Period. You need to tell me how we're going to go from A to B. If you're not able to calibrate it and support it with evidence of what you have done in the past, it becomes a hoax, becomes rhetoric, which politicians are good at. But then that's not even the point. You see, we need to understand how this whole thing is. When you look at people that are honored, there are three categories of people that um, philosophers have established in the world. There are people that are simply mundane. They are chasing for uh, things of, of excitement. Okay, They exist in the world. There are a different group of the middle class group of people, where me and you belong to today, whose persuasion is service. The service you're providing here today is good for society and it pays your bills, just like the service I provide and all that. But in this whole huge element of society is the critical part. The critical part are the two people we call lords. The lords temporal, politicians who get the power, and the lords spiritual. These are people that have, selected, that have set themselves apart. If, if we were in the clergy or in, in, in worship centers, people that have taken it upon themselves to gain your trust and my trust because they are morally beyond me and you, right? They, they, their moral perpendicularity is higher than the norm, okay? So they have gained your respect and mine in terms of moral things. The politicians have gained our trust. It is trust that puts them in power, okay? To get, and they? that is the highest level of service. You know, that, that, that many people... Have they? Just, just <laughs> well, like, many well, people question that. Yeah, 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 I agree. But because that's what you know, even in governance today, not top politicians, Governance, yeah. government today, they, that trust quotient, I don't know it's if not, you it's know. Not there. I was trying to say that that's what it should be. So okay. I'm getting to somewhere. So to be a politician, to come out to want to serve, the currency that gets you there is the trust of the people. So my point is to get to that point and start getting so banal and mundane as wrecking the trust and getting involved in money and all of those things, it defeats the entire purpose because yeah. the height that you have come to is the highest height, highest place of service. Yeah. Your name is etched in history forever. Okay? So, so then the third part is people that are leading thoughts. I mean, we've just had a pandemic. Some people developed the vaccine. Those are the three kinds of people. So when we are looking at somebody who wants to come out for public service, yeah. you are looking at the elements of trust. So elements of durability in terms of building a consistent society. So, so let me just pick up on a few things that you have said. Earlier you said, you know, we should be looking at who's going to pick us from point A to point B. Yep. So in asking those questions of those who are positioning themselves for public office, um, how should we be asking, for instance, that you're getting the inflation figures down from 
20 to 21 percent back to normal how should we be asking questions of how to get the human development index you know uh, to uh, something that is stable that gets everybody along in the development indices how should we be asking about how to make food prices you know affordable for everyone and then are the politicians answering those questions as they begin to campaign are they answering those questions or are they you know dancing around the periphery my point is if you want to come and serve, you would have done your basic homework, right? Problems will never end. Government comes and solves the bit that they can and they move on, okay? But what is required of every person who comes to power is that you must leave a legacy, right? Now, the Nigerian people are about to employ somebody to run the nation, right? What we'll be looking at today is who matches the crisis position we are in, okay? Now, Recall that in the last uh, minutes, I had mentioned to you that the fundamental thing in developing any nation is peace and security. Those are fundamental. Because if you do not have peace and security, if people, you have not been able to elicit the trust of the people to be able to go forward, a lot of what you are doing will be challenged or ineffective or not achieve all that you wanted to achieve, right? So what I'm looking for and what I think is necessary for us to look for today, see who will unify the nation? Who will galvanize these incredible talents that exist in the nation? Who is going to elevate? You see, we so can't you, just... you consider unity more important than those other development issues? I consider unity fundamental. Unity is fundamental because a nation is actually a people that are looking in one direction. So if you were to look at the real pictorial of a nation, it is a picture from the back where everybody has a vision, they are looking, people are together, then you got a leader leading them going forward, right? But if you have a divided house, how are we going to stand, okay? This is a very plural country. We mm -hmm. understand that culture, religion, all of that exists here. But certain things can unify, unify us, right? Which is why we require values that are enduring. There are, me and you can disagree on so many things, but we cannot disagree on the fact that you require me to be truthful to you, I require you to be truthful to me. We can disagree on so many things, but we cannot disagree on the fact that you require me to act in good conscience, right? What is good for the person on the left is good for the person on the right. There are values that unify mankind. At, at private levels, we can bicker and disagree on all that, but there are fundamental things that we must pull together. And people need to understand not, that you cannot continue to tell the public what you're not ready to do. Mm. You have to be able to show the public consistency in what you're promising and your ability and intent, what, belief, what? in yeah. being able to carry it through. So have, have we been able to achieve that over the past 22 years? Um, I would like not to stand on the pure political business, like I told you. No, no, I, I understand. I, just, just a quick one, just so you, you, you understand my, my trajectory. Mm -hmm. We've taken this decision, the same decisions around promises and promises over the past 22, going to 23 or 24 years now, from politicians, from 1999, 2003, 2007, up until where we are now. So in terms of promises delivered, do you think we Ayo, have the, chosen the well? The jury is out, Ayo. <laughs> I, I'm asking because, I mean, we're, see, we're going to be listening to rhetoric again, just as the you said. Ju the jury is out, which is why we need to scale back and rethink. You see, I think that the bigger challenge is actually what is resonating with the masses. That is why leadership is a sacred role. If you come to this point where you can gather a huge number of people and begin to mouth all of your beliefs. You, you have to sit back and consider what you're creating, what army of people, what belief system are you boiling in them? Because all of them do not have access to the information you have, neither do they have the platform that you have. But, but, but let's bring the jury in yeah. now. Sorry, Aya, let's bring the jury in. Aya made a very critical point at the start of the program when he quoted Peter Drunken. But, if we're to hear or process the noise that we're hearing from politicians, 
What is it critical about what's not being said that will form the basis of the electorate making their decisions? If we look at the noise coming from all the political parties, but, but particularly the three main ones now. Yeah. You see, the thing is, um, everybody would project what works in their best interest. This is my personal view. I believe that, personally, we didn't start this journey of this third republic on an ideological basis. That is why we are lost in tribe and religion and all that. People are not hearing themselves, OK? What I would have loved to see was where people are conversing issues and debating on approaches to solve our basic problems, OK? Not people who are in a silo, just re, I mean, reinvigorating supports that in themselves are even inimical to the people that are mounting it just because they, are limited, they have limited information and just like all of us are in the crowd. You, could, you come and say things and people just run and believe it without interrogating those views. My thing is this. I would have thought that the level, of, at the level where we are now, that when people want to come and lead us, there will be people that sign up to some higher ideals. There are things that destroy society. There are things that build society. We have to all collectively agree that the things that we're going to pursue will be things that will build society. The question then is, how do we begin that journey? But don't answer that one yet. Chamberlain <laughs> wants to ask you a few questions. Go ahead, guy. Well, I'm hoping that eventually maybe that answer will come in along the way. Oh, Mr. Koroko, good morning and good to see you. Now, listening to uh, some of what you highlighted, but in context of, if you look at how we've been voting over time, uh, there are those who think that, well, how about considering what they say is a fact that uh, our voting has not actually reflected the mindset of society? in the sense that some of them argue that the system has largely, over time, been manipulated. And as such, that's why so many who should have actually gone, you know, to stand in the queue and vote, usually stay aloof. And so to that extent, they're not exactly sure if those principles will actually apply in terms of how we should be making the right decision, because those decisions, they say, uh, the results we've seen over time, has not reflected what we have. But some now argue thinking, from what we've seen of the recent register, if you look through where you see the uh, age distribution of 18 to 34 being leading the pack in that list, so they expect a lot more reflection of the true mindset of the populace if we go out and vote this time. Also in consideration of the system of voting where Anek is talking about how that uh, BVAS will really be difficult to manipulate. Now, assuming all of that were put in the mix, would you then say they may have a point? Obviously, they do have a point. And um, for all that it matters, we must give um, credit to the government for signing this bill into law. I mean, we're joining somewhere. And I think, again, that... It's very uh, important to note that recent events have helped galvanize the base to realize the need for governance. You see, um, sometimes because of the nature of where we are as a nation, we're still developing. A lot of people still run their lives, like in the primordial times, where you have your own security in your house, you have a borehole, you have all that. A lot of people do not really understand the impact of governance and how, what development means, okay? But I think that our recent experience, our recent experience in security, in devaluation of the currency, in the management of our affairs, I mean, we realized that there was a pandemic and all that. It's actually made a lot of people to wake up to say, come we would require to pay a lot much more attention on how we, our lives are governed, on how policies are made and policies that affect us and all that. And the, uh, the, the youth, like Timberlin rightly mentioned, are also leading in the vanguard because the world, the future belongs to them. It's a global world today. You live in Nigeria, you can walk in, in China. You can walk anywhere. But they require that all the things that will support them to compete in the global world are present. 
So they require a leader that understands the changing times. And it's a different thing allowing people to make decisions for you. It's a different thing entirely to get involved in that process, okay? One of the reasons why I'm also here today is to lend my voice to that, because all of us need to get up and take a stake in what is going on and ask the questions that we're required to ask. Government will only do what you demand. Government won't do what they want. What they want is in their interest. Everybody uh, pursues a selfish interest, but the moment there is pressure and demand, people can come into um, a discussion of agreement. So how do we uh, bind everybody's interest in being able to build a society that works for everybody? That's what we're hoping for, okay? If we have a society that works for everybody, we can, make, we can progress, really. But the fundamental thing here is how do we develop our nation? How do we develop our nation? You're driving on the street today, there are so many cars. You look at some of them, there's only one person in it. A train, a train service would have conveyed all these people at minimal cost to all of us. To everybody sending their children outside the country today, if you can afford to do that, we could have built our schools here. People would have come in. All of this is coming together to develop. We cannot develop our country except we come together. And that's why we require thoughtful leaders, okay. people yeah. who can think through these problems and provide solutions that can band all of us together towards that journey that we all hope that we'll get to one day. I hope I address your issues. You know, I, as it is today, there are usually different considerations, uh, I mean, when people go out there to vote, because you have different classes of people who are facing different scenarios and different circumstances. And what we've seen over time is, no matter how much narrative or impressions or mindset that uh, the electorate have before the election, on the election day, it's a different ballgame entirely because some of the plans or impressions that many have usually go out of the window. Now, whichever way the pendulum swings, at the end of the day, for this presidential and general elections, would you say that, um, well, given the build-up, uh, the registration of a lot of young people, the awareness that have been created over time, this particular time, would you ultimately say, because we don't know how it will pan out, so it's somewhat hypothetical, I agree, w would you say that, well, whichever way it swings, we seem to have taken a step? Or is it that if it goes a particular way, who knows, because it won't go the way everybody wants. Will that then cloud or be cloud the kind of impressions we have of the elections at the end of the day of the kind of steps we may or may not have taken? Well, the hope, the hope is that the build-up gives us a character sketch of how the people are thinking and that the way the people are thinking should reflect in what the votes will show. That's our hope. But then, that hope can only be possible if it is policed by people of interest who pay attention to it. Because keep in mind that politics is fights. It depends on what side you're fighting for. I would rather choose to fight on the part of the people. People who fight on the part of the people are never sore losers, all right? Me and you can disagree on policy issues. The important thing is that we all mean to serve. But it becomes a different thing. if. I, I'm hoping to go there to serve myself. That's where we divide, okay? For as long as it's in the interest of the people. Keep in mind, though, that everybody votes for their sentiments, okay? You can, I can come here and theorize and logicalize everything, but there are basic things that are called to me. People, a lot of people are single issue voters, a lot of people are plural issue voters, a lot of people have their own concerns and all that. But let what we are hearing from the politicians be the things that are building us up. I think that's the fundamental point. And it would be nice for all of us in our different um, sectors and areas where we can lend our voice to remind politicians that the greatest need we have today in our nation is to build up the nation, to enable us to come to a point where we can develop, right? while we are hoping that they will make their cases and then we will interrogate their cases and nobody should be intimidated, people should be free to make their choices and let those choices count. So while we are saying all these things, we are also um, respectfully thanking the um, civil society because they've done an excellent amount of work at this period and a lot much more other people, international community to police the processes because we need the police, right? 
we can't just leave it in the hands of um, people that will not deliver what it is that we want. It's also understandable that everybody will want it to work their way. But let the will of the people count. I think that is, let's build a society where the electoral process yeah. provides some sort of the integrity of the choices that it is that we have. So that if I could use, if I could use your field as some sort of example, wherein you know we had different professionals in that regard. In fact, there's so many of them that you never will think that will face scenarios as buildings collapsing in our climb here uh, because of the, of the amount of expertise that that sector is replete with. Yet we have that kind of scenario. And what we get to hear from some of them is, well, we do what we can. The authorities don't listen to us. And so, well, what else can we do? Whereas several others who are not in that field think, no, they can actually do a lot more. That if those professionals put their foot down, and I'm sure because it is professionals who watch some of those things go awry. So they think, in that regard, um, the middle class here, can they, was it, would it be a fair assessment if we say, look, the middle class is actually part of the problems because they, over time, have not been participating as they ought to because if they had lent their voice and put their money where their mouth is, walk the walk and not just talk the talk, we may not have put, been in this kind of scenario. Now, this okay, is... Well, pardon me. I understand that we need to go to break now, but we'll let you respond to that when we return in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. So, Mr. Kurunko, go ahead and respond. I mean, are the professionals to blame here? Because many think, look, is your profession in that sector, like, is it a typology of the challenge we face in the country? Without a doubt. You see, we, we must continue to reflect the built environment as a metaphor for society because it's an evidence every day that you get up, you see a building. It should resonate in your mind that, the reason why this building is standing today, serving the purpose that it is serving, is because the developer, the person who conceived it, made the right choices to choose the right people to be able to put it together. Let me just give you a, a small example. Only last week, a client of mine and a friend asked me to come and give him what is called a building survey, just one of the services my profession provides. A building survey for a house that he wanted to buy. So I got into this estate, it was an environment of about 12 homes. And I checked around the whole place. And I told him, if you, have, if you must buy a place in this estate, buy this unit, this unit three. So when he got back and told him that he wanted the unit three, the owner said, no, 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 that's where he wants to live. And I said, why? He said, that's the one. He said, no, that he did extra work, that's where he wanted to live. So that tells you, because. Even as a reflection, like I said, using our profession as a metaphor, a lot of all these building collapses, how many of them are owner-occupied? Mm. You can hear about the collapses when they go multi-levels. Mm. But at the single mm. level mm. or the just dual level, you hear about other defects. Mm. People die for electrocution, the place is being flooded every time because of compromised choices and the things that they use. And yes, to answer Chamberlain's question properly, it is an, a failure of integrity, which is why people who want people to work for them in governance, people who want to work for them in development, which is a trajectory. Development follows from a developed mind, looking for a developed society, and then developing the society. Perhaps another question that raises, let's close with this, is do people even understand what their job descriptions are when they vie for office. Then does the person who wants to employ the people, that is the Nigerian voting, does the person know, does the Nigerian know the job description of the president? It is assumed, but do we really know? For instance, a vote for the president of the federal, for a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a vote for at least 1,000 officers. He selects the ministers, the department heads, the agency's heads, and all of that. Mm. And that's just one of several other functions that he has to perform. The customs, immigration, and all those things, they are part of government. So do you think we have enough understanding of the job description 
of the president or the governor that we are recruiting into office. Okay, I'll, I'll put it the other way so that I can address your question very well. This is where the fourth state of the realm come into, right? I think that it is too much of a journey <laughs> to demand from an average Nigerian to understand what the job is. But if you tell him the consequences of the person running the nation, the impact they can have in his life, if you, if you begin to look at what the person represents, does he, is it somebody that brings out the best in us? Is it somebody, I mean, I will always refer to um, Awolo in the West, how he was able to inspire free education. A lot of people aspire to be better human beings in life. Are the leaders we have today promoting the best in us, or are they bringing out the worst in people? Because there's something about um, honor. Honor is nothing. The value of honor is who gives the honor. It yes. is from where you derive it that makes all the difference. Who are the one? What is he promoting? What the messages that he's passing to the people? Who is he resonating with? And what kind of a society are we going to develop hearing those kind of narratives? But we will never know until we have tested them. No, we know by analysis. Okay. That's why I said no man builds a reputation for what he's going to do. It's always based on what you have done. I think we should make that a quotable yeah. quote by you. <laughs> <laughs> Emeka Okoroko is a policy analyst me. and uh, is in the building industry. Thank you so much pleasure, pleasure. for being Thank a part of our conversation Thank this morning. All right. All right. Well, there is more where that came from on Channel Television this morning. After this break, please stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Mr. Michael Murray joins us next. The former DG NOA, that's your orientation agency. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Good morning, Chamberlain. Good to see you again. But before we go any further, let me just you know take a look at what uh, Mr. Koronko just said right there in terms of building a reputation because we've seen that over time. Because today we see former President Obasan Joe say Nigeria must have a national identity, we must have a dream. And that seems to be missing from the narrative of the country in terms of who we are, what we stand for, either locally or even when we get out there, what is our ethos. Those kind of things seem missing. And he said, look, over time, it is the reputation that politicians have built, perhaps, uh, if I could put it differently, is what has got us to where we are today. So you've been in, in NOA, so uh, getting that kind of... Uh, narrative making the rounds how does that resonate with you for instance well incidentally i was with uh, former president robertson joe over the weekend and discussion centered around these issues of leadership integrity and so forth and so on and what i deduce from it is that you can you can you, you know leadership can happen to you because of situations and situations can also create leaders so when you have leaders coming because the for instance babangida created himself leader you know uh Obasanjo himself was made a leader because situations demanded so political leadership political leadership oh, okay. that is what i mean now what we are looking at is how leadership in all aspects of society, whether it's political, whether it's uh, social, or private sector, corporate enterprise, enterprise, we need to come to it with integrity. That has to be a given. We may not prepare ourselves to for the job before we get there. We may not have the qualities. Listen, the Nigerian constitution makes all of us eligible to contest for president of Nigeria. Once you go to school, once you have uh, 18 years one and stuff like that is in cont contained in the constitution but are we suitable are we suitable for the job so you can be a professor you can be a doctor you can be whatever but you are not suitable for leadership and if you're not leadership, suitable for leadership 
please stay where you are. Prepare others to lead. But politicians, um, haven't they made it uh, in, in such a way that they deliberately keep the people down? Because when you say haven't gone to school, I mean, many who ask questions as to the requirements to occupy some of the highest offices in this country is really, really low. The standards are very abysmally low. Because, I mean, to get into some professional offices, because, by the way, the world is a global village now. And so to get into some professional offices in society, you require way much more qualification than you would be if you're to get into political leadership. Because they think now it doesn't stand in the face of a uh, global village uh, scenario. And as such, rather than change it, or ensure that it's a, a lot more is required of persons who want to occupy certain high offices, they just refuse to make that happen. Yeah, um, sadly so, because like you rightly pointed out, the world has moved very fast. There was a time where we had quality at that level, where people came from secondary school, teachers, colleges, and became leaders, and they did well within the circumstances they found themselves. That was at our level. But now we have advanced. The world itself has advanced. But Chamberlain, capitalism was not built for Africa. Socialism was not meant for Africa. Ch uh, communism was meant for China. All of these people create ideological uh, extremes for themselves. So, so what have we created for ourselves? So what is meant for us? We are not if, creating if anything for ourselves. For so we just sit down and follow. We, we, that is why we have a confused uh, paradigm. We are either, every day we are mixing, we are dealing with Chinese tomorrow, dealing with Russians tomorrow, dealing with China, Germans and Americans and everybody. Well, isn't that a, uh, an offshoot of the kinds of leadership that we have had? Because there are many who still think, well, no, they, they will disagree because they still feel that if certain right persons, yeah, right in, in the sense of the word, have gotten to those post positions, that they could have definitely stared us differently because they've done it in their private businesses. And so they could do it at a higher level. I agree with you, but don't forget also that even the previous leadership had development plans, you know, that, that were in milestones. Where is the plan? What happened? Why did we abandon it? Why did we abandon it as a nation? And nobody is asking questions. Nobody is setting the agenda. And that is why when uh, Koronko mentioned uh, the fourth estate of the rim, I said, yes, we are approaching an election. What is the media saying? What agenda is the media setting for the people? Because there are other aspects of public education. If you don't go to school, you can learn from the media. So if the media is responsible and straightforward and decides to teach, to educate, because that is one of its functions, then it should begin to teach society. I know a community or a country where they are 90, almost 95%, the literacy level is 95%. Maybe the population is small, but at least the citizens know what to do, whether they're in the market or they're selling fish or whatever they know. So, and this uh, kind of uh, literacy level was either derived from a primary basic education uh, or, or you know, access to, to information about what is happening in society via the media. So they learn. That is the way to know what the occupant of a prospective office uh, should be, his, his qualities, you know, then we choose them for that purpose. Today, we are in the 21st century, uh, we are heading elsewhere. The pe people are moving to the moon. The world is moving to the moon. We have not started. We don't have electricity. We don't have this. We don't have that. It's just chaotic. Mm. But from the scenarios we've seen playing out in the country today, where we see a lot of young people who are out there holding their own. I mean, we've seen the ramping up of their registration with the data, the voter data, and mm -hmm. we do hope that they equally will be out there on the day of election, no matter what happens, to get their voices heard. Is it a matter of time before uh, politicians can no longer keep the people down there? Because right now, there's a lot of frustration and lots of anger out there. Let me tell you, Chamberlain. The last uh, three, four elections, you didn't see this level of mobilization among the people. Campaigns have not started, no public voter education, nothing. People are already mobilizing themselves to participate. 
they want to participate, there is an eagerness to participate, they want to take back the country from wherever they think it has gone to. That is good for the polity. And that is why government also should be careful. Because if you fail them, you are creating another avenue for something I don't want to talk about. Now, and how do you prevent that? People are, do not have jobs, they cannot get it. The Naira is tumbling every day. Today I hear it's about 700, it's going up again and so forth and so on. So what do you expect? People, you are, you are overtaxing people. No, the tax doesn't go everywhere. You know, not everybody pays tax in this country. And the few that pay, you overtax them. Those others who can pay, the rich, very rich, they devise means of escaping it. They donate 150 vehicles to police. They say they, are, they need rebate. They have uh, done corporate social responsibility. We have a lot of such examples. If only 6.2% or so were there about of Nigerians pay taxes, then you know there is a problem. And that is not the way to, to even look for money. That, is not, that shouldn't be the only way. Yes, it is an important way. If that income is reflected in the kind of governance or development that they see, but they don't even see it. And if you want to raise income, if you want to raise government income, I mean, you should, you should be talking to us about productivity. We should see industries coming. We should see your ease and of doing business, attracting people to, 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 to do the business. But it's not there. So what are we happy? We are just building an army of future, future bonders and mm. terrorists you and know, so forth and so on. Looking through the president's, former president Obasanjo's just comment again, where he was advocating that we need an identity. We need uh, a national dream, something that everybody will aspire to. Mm -hmm. Because today, almost in every sector you look to, you see those young professionals just fleeing the country, yeah. just trying to go look for greener pastures yes. because they think this country has failed them. Mm. Uh, and so to that extent, questions, big question marks concerning the NOA. So many say, look, why do you think the NOA failed to ensure that they build up? Because many messages coming through didn't even resonate with the people, unlike how it used to be before. Why was that the case? Well, you see, the case of the NOA um, is something I've been talking about for a long time, since I left office. I have time, I've had reason to reflect and also discuss with my uh, successor in office. You see, the NOA is supposed to be, after the fourth um, uh, rim of the uh, fourth uh, uh, state, of the state of, uh, then that should be the fifth. In fact, it should be part of it because of the role it has to play in terms of citizen education, citizen mobilization, promoting dignity of labor, making sure that Nigerians love and let's not, see, we need to promote our, a national culture. Even if it's not there, let's look for it and institute it and promote it. This, today I hear and I read that they want to uh, wipe out NOA and so forth and so on. Please, for God's sake, government shouldn't do that. Government should support it. Government should fund it properly and bring the right professionals. When we're in office, we wanted to create a situation where it could be a commission. As a commission with every representation from the states cleared by their state assemblies to participate. People that have proven integrity, demonstrable quality, demonstrable love for this country. Let's look at what can, because the national culture for Nigerians is already there. It's yeah, just harnessing it to make why, it work for us. Why do we need an NOA where, when ideally, mm. politicians themselves should be the NOA? They should be the one practicing what they preach mm. and not just saying one thing and doing another because whatever happens, people look to them because they're leaders in whatever field they are. And if they set the wrong examples, it will resonate far much more than the message of the NOA, I dare say. Society is not about politicians alone. Society is constituted by different groups that needs to be reached with a specific kind of message. If That's why the media, the media, yeah, the media so can if, do that. So, so if the NOA is strengthened and given the capacity to discharge its functions, even at the community level, it will now be engaged in moral situation. It will be talking to the people at that level. It will implement it. It will be communicating government policies, programs, and activities. It will assist the citizens to know their role within government and to know and play their role as citizens from the office of the citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But, you know, you're still in that same line of asking, why do we need an NOA? Because in many cases, many, if you ask a lot of people, they will just think, look, NOA being a government agency, will always be a mouthpiece of government at whatever 
administration whatever time the annual exists and to that extent they also wonder because all those messages the big question is the trust questions which my colleagues Correct. always highlight mm. they say look over time politicians never get the trust of nigerians mm, yes. they come in and tell you one thing but when they get in there they hide figures they they can't even tell you what negotiations or agreements they've got with other countries that will affect you contracts are signed they are inflated so that trust is not just there between nigerians and politicians and so it makes it a lot more difficult but they see they look to what they do as opposed to what they say i wish i was the one asking you the questions because you are providing the right answers you are making the right observations about the challenge in this country the noa it, it, it exists in other countries. Nearly every country that I have, I have been to China is even the fourth most important agencies, the Central Guidance Commission, I've mentioned it. In Ghana, it's been there, in Egypt, and all of these places. When I was in office, Botswana came to learn. Learn about anyway? Uh, yes. What did they come they, to learn They about? came to learn how we were mobilizing citizens, what the, how the structure is. Was there mobilization and there was yes, structure? Yes, yes, we were. There is a structure. Oh. It is there in the 774 local government areas. Uh -huh. And each office in that look in the, at that level has not less than seven staff, and they as they not they just don't do house to house. They also organize community sensitization programs, and they can do it better if they have the resources. They don't have. When I was in office, I was sending fifty thousand naira to the to the to the state offices, and that is what they would they would now use to do programs even at the state level. The local government level was getting just 10,000, and I increased it because when I came, it was just 2,000 naira that I given to them. They can't do the programs. So we are living, we are forgetting something. The NOA is custodian of values. It's supposed to work with our systems and institutions, whether they are traditional or government. Government should not have trust deficit. Government is supposed to be made up of responsible people who are, are, are meant to deliver service. So if they come to twist the people, the people will twist them someday. It's not going to be long. So politicians must have the right message for the people, and they should work with the relevant. NOA shouldn't be seen as a biased organization. NOA shouldn't have trust deficit issues. Now how can that happen if government keeps funding them? Because they are, well, government can fund them. They are supposed to. Is government supposed to do the wrong things? Government is supposed to do the right things. So NOA is supposed to communicate the right things that government are do, is doing. Unless if government thinks that it is a fraudulent organization, so NOA should communicate the fraud that government is doing. All right. Well, well of course, there are more perspectives to, to follow up on that, but my colleagues in Lagos have got some questions for you. Yeah. Um, first of all, Mr. Mary, good morning. Um, you, you talked about, in justifying the retention of the NOA, you talked about um, a national culture. Pray tell, what's this national culture? And uh, does this national culture that you believe is in existence, does it unify, does it give uh, all Nigerians a sense of being Nigerian rather than being from a particular geopolitical zone or region, as the case may be, of the country? That is the issue now. Every Nigerian, everywhere we meet, we say we are Nigerians. And Nigeria, Nigeria, you see the approach to each individual as Nigerians where we have challenged, we, we are challenged, we are in, the, we, in football and so forth and so on, which is a common example that people make. You, you, see, you see the kind of support, you see the solidarity. So what we need to, is to take from there and create a grand national um, solidarity for the nation based on the values that are common to us. The day we started abandoning the values that uh, you know, we're, we're meant to bind us together. That is the day we miss the road. As as far as we had regions in the in the early 60s, Sadona, Awolo, Azikwe were saying the right things. They were nationalists talking about how to create that, you know, that uh, that 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 cohesion, so that we can achieve and be the best. The cohesion, today, is, the cohesion the is only available... Changed, the criteria for choosing. So the cohesion is only available when Nigerians are involved in an activity, say football. But at other times when there is nothing other 
uh, that unites us than that activity, that sporting activity. There is no cohesion. So there is no national culture. Before then, before, before we missed the road, before all of this became a problem, remember there was a time in this country when there was a crime. If there was one crime, theft or armed robbery on the road, the whole nation is, will stand together and be wondering how it happened. Today, what is the, what is the message? So it is not as if we didn't have a national culture of empathy and sympathy. We have a culture of, 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 uh, of, of wanting to be the best in the things we do and the choices we make. We have the culture of supporting each other. It's not just about football. Anything that we're doing, Nigerians are sell, uh, excelling. You can see it on social media. You can see it in the media. People are quick to identify that this is a Nigerian. Nigerians would be quick to identify a Nigerian that has graduated with the first class, with, uh, or has gone to the moon, or to the, or performed the uh, heart surgery with, uh, with robots and so forth. And so on. Nigerians celebrate that. But, but Mr. Mary, that's so not, that's not what unites, that that's not what together. gives now, Nigerians now, a sense of being Nigerian, rather than being from a particular region of the country. And that's why I'd like to put it to you that the NOA is missing in action in that regard because it hasn't engendered a national consciousness through value reorientation of what it means to be Nigerian? Well, you see, um, you are right. And that is the issue I just made. The NOA does not have the capacity, the resources to discharge the functions of that office. And it, look at where it is located. It is now maybe even a sub-department or something in the Ministry of Information, which is wrong. That is not the purpose of the NOA. It is hidden, talked somewhere and hidden, not allowed to discharge its functions. Because people do not even, people who are administering the Ministry of Information do not understand the role of the NOA within the, the structure of governance and society. So what I am saying, and please listen to me, in Nigeria there are values that we, 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 we uphold. And these values are universal. There are 40 proven principles of character. They are in religion, they are in, uh, whether they are traditional or Islam or Christianity, they are there. We just need to take those things and promote them. For instance, charity, hard work, do not steal. Do, are these not part of our national culture? Are these not the things that uphold our dignity as a nation? Now, when it is not there, even people from, that we want to do business with think of us as First and foremost, once they meet us, they think of us as criminals. You have to work to prove it. Well, well in the age of so technology... why can't we promote uh, this pardon as me, our culture? Pardon me, pardon me Mr. Mr. Mary. In the age of technology, the digital age, it would seem like uh, what is required to promote those values that you talk about, you know, are, are not uh, uh, ambitious figures in terms of finances. Which brings me to a follow-up to Chamberlain's question about funding. If you're asking... Uh, uh, for, uh, for funding from government, where if government and as a result is not guaranteed to do the right things all the time, then why should government uh, fund the NOA? Now, in the age of technology, how many people have access to the kind of technology you are talking about? In the communities, in the far from, in my Kiana village, how many people can do Twitter or Facebook and so forth and so on? And even if they are, it's the young people that are doing it. The very young people that are doing it, that they may not be anywhere to control the levers of society. That also, so that also underscores the, the mass. That, that also underscores, my apologies, Mr. O'Meara, that also underscores the importance of integrating what Pukola has just asked because, you know, from what we hear, what we know at this moment, the most popular demographic in Nigeria are the young people. And that's really the space to reach them. But we'll talk more on that when we return from this break. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Well, Mr. O'Meary, you know, the, the questions are a myriad, you know, and as Chamberlain said, we can only begin the conversation at this point. The National Orientation Agency over the years has been known to, you know, be generally quiet, I mean, in recent time at the, at the very least. But the glory days, many will not forget, where the, the mobilization of the people was through the media, 
The media is not going to initiate the conversation. It has to be the NOA doing the initiation. So it, it then begins to raise questions on the minds of so many people. Let me begin, you know, let me ask a, quick, a question around what Chamberlain raised earlier about the comments of former President Lucia Gombasujo, where he said, uh, he reminded us of what we have in Chapter 2 of the 1999 Constitution. And he said, Chapter 2 of the Constitution says, national ethics shall be discipline, integrity, dignity of labor, social justice, religious tolerance, self-reliance, and patriotism. Now, many may not even be aware that these things are part of our core values as a nation. One would expect that it's the national orientation that would be at the forefront of letting people know these and consequently make it a part of our daily lives at work, on the roads, at home. Now, um, your colleague talked about using democracy, I mean, uh, technology to do this. How do, you, uh, how do you teach people these values, these core values that are, you just reeled out from the Constitution, using technology, uh, I mean, using uh, Twitter and Facebook and so forth and so on? It can only be one of the tools to reach the people. But let's now, assume that this it's same just complaint one of, I've made. I spoke to people. Let's assume, I was at the airport. Mr. O'Mary, let's assume that that is one. It's just yes. one of the tools. But we not even, yes. many do not even, and I think that's why Chamberlain, you know, began the conversation around the orientation by the people. Many don't even know whether there is an yes. NOA. That's why, that's perhaps the reason for the call. But look, if we're funding it and we can't hear about it, what's the, what's the use? But you are not funding it. The last time I spoke with the uh, agency, there is no funding. And there is a limit to what so, uh, other sources, uh, if you want development partners to come in, they will only fund what interests them. They can't go about funding your values for you. They can't go about funding you to communicate your programs, policies, or how to... Uh, they just they, they want to look for places or opportunities to explore. If the government, in your so opinion, just a second, the government sir, of Nigeria just a must second. take it as a serious matter. Just a second. Yes. If government, as far as you are concerned, is not funding the NOA, what does that suggest to you? That the NOA is not important or what? What suggests to me is that the operators of government at that highest level do not understand that Nigeria has a need, that there is a gap that NOA was created to fill in the first place, and therefore it should be supported to do the work. They don't understand it. So what, is, because what then if happens... The, if the, the Constitution itself... Go ahead, go ahead. ...has provided in it, this looking um, the world looking for debt relief, was it for himself? He got our debts wiped for Nigerians to breathe and begin afresh. Did we sustain it? You see, he may, they, you cannot do everything. That's why I say situations bring leaders. If people had built on, continuously built on what was started, you know we won't be talking about debt anymore. We won't be looking for China, Chinese loan, or American loan, or whoever loan. We'll be doing some other things. But now, where are the things? Do you think politicians will learn their lesson this period where, because of the, uh, the momentum that young people seem to have now going for a particular political party? The politicians are under severe threat if they don't know. Anybody who aspires to office and doesn't know what to do, that it is time to draw a line and begin to serve the people as promised. I am telling you, we have been seeing it already. People who have been going to their constituencies and been chased out, politicians, so it's going to be worse. Because the energy of society, that is the youth, they are now aware, awake, and ready to participate, to take charge, to be involved. Well, maybe we should end with saying, well, they, they, they can't lie to the people all of the time and expect to get away with it. You Times know. have changed. Yeah, of course. And you can't keep a good man down, as yeah. they say. But we have to thank you for coming on. Mr. Michael Murray is a former DG NOA. We will be back in a moment. Stay thank with you. us. Thank you so much.
All right, uh, we do have some messages coming through, so we'll go ahead and take some of them. This first one comes through from Adekoya Fetuga, who says, uh, the, which is the very first one that you see right there, the core values of Nigeria should be taught in schools, starting from primary schools, he says. Just reminds me of moral instructions. Law Alpha Cross says, as the electioneering campaigns start within the week, Nigerians who are the electorate should properly examine and assess the political office seekers to ascertain their credibility and track records enough of empty promises and name calling. Mm. Uh, you talked about the your, days of yore of the NOA, and some of those songs come to me now, but uh, perhaps we'll get the opportunity to sing those songs some other time. <laughs> Let's take this one from Festus Akimboyua. He says, while well, personality will play a role in 2023, 2023 elections, Nigerians should pay attention to policies that will address our security challenges because it's the most important political issue right now and also policies that will take care of their personal economic interests. And Professor Imono, Imono Kainakina says, it's time we diversify and deregulate the economy, reform power sector to drive down cost of production, cut interest rate on borrowing to single digits, grow the SMEs, and cut oil theft. Invest in human capacity development, health, education, and invest in agriculture. Mohammed Bashir wants to talk about the NOA. He says, NOA is really not doing what it is expected of it. With this eye-opening revelations by your guests, it is clear the agency is benign is Stif being stifled. Is being stifled of funds. That organization needs to be funded ASAP, especially as at this time of insecurities and the upcoming election. Who's listening? Well, we are speaking, and everyone else better be listening. That's the show today. I'm Ayo Makire. Have a wonderful you rest of your day. <laughs> all right. Thank you for you watching. You guys the morality police in that. <laughs> <laughs> what was all the truth? What's going on there? <laughs> okay, the morality police is saying goodbye. Thank you for watching. I'm Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain, so have a good one.